Welcome to July's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is maximum length of repeated subarray. Given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, return the maximum length of a subarray that appears in both arrays. So subarray means it needs to be consecutive and they need to be exactly the same. So here we can see nums1 and nums2. We're going to return 3 because 3 to 1 is the maximum subarray that's in both of our arrays here. Here with all zeros and all zeros here we can see it's just gonna equal five because they're all the same right okay so at first glance it I thought maybe this would be some sort of stack approach or sliding window technique possibly but I quickly realized that wasn't gonna be realistic because if we try to do a stack approach it's gonna start getting exponential because we have to check like each one and then recreate our stack each time so um, that that wasn't gonna work which only leaves us with basically a recursive approach, right? And they give you a hint to use a DP array. Uh, so that gives us a good idea of what approach to take here. Uh, say that we had these two arrays, right? And we're going to create a DP array that represents each one's uh, starting point here. So three, oops, four, seven, I believe there was two there, right? So let's think about if this was a 2D array and we'll add one value here for zero. How would this look if we were trying to solve, uh, do this like DP approach here? Well, okay, so if, forget about this zero here, this is just like a blank string. If this was blank, all these rows and columns here are gonna be starting with zero, right? So that much we know, there's no way we can match anything here. So all these will be zero and all these will also be zero here. Now, let, let's start with like 3 and 1. What are we trying to check is, is exactly? Uh, well, basically, we're just trying to check to see if the numbers are equal to one another. Because if they're if they're equal to one another, that means we have at least one length where the subarray exists in both, right? So here with 1 and 3, there's nothing. So we just continue, continue. And here we finally see, okay, 3, there exists 1. So we make that 1. And this just continues all the way to 0 like that. Uh, but there's something that we need to basically check here. Like say that we're moving down here. Uh, we see that, okay, 2 equals 1. Okay, that's that's whatever. But as we move here, we see that 2 and 2 equals 1, right? So when we add 1 here, what we want to do is check to see, okay, we know that adding 2 at this point is going to increase our length by 1. So let's look back ahead and see, okay, when, when were those a 3 and this was 1, 2, 3? what was the maximum length there? Because we know we're gonna add one here. So whatever consecutive subarray exists inside minus uh, one row and one column, th th we're gonna add that one to that value. So here we see a one, so we'd make this a two. Uh, otherwise we just continue. And if we just continue this process, say this is one, zero, zero, zero. And then here one, we look back ahead, see that's two, so there's gonna be a three and all these, I believe, are just going to be zero because they don't exist, right? So that's the basic idea, but how do we return our maximum? Well, you can see uh, the maximum exists whenever we calculate it on the spot. So we're going to have to keep track of that because try as I might, carrying the max um, all the way up to the end, end here, to the bottom left, the bottom right, I mean, um, gave me a lot of problems. So rather than try and figure that out, we'll just store the max whenever we calculate it and then return that. Um, but we still need to update our DP array to keep track of the previous ones here. All right, so let's begin by first initializing NNM, which is gonna be the length of nums one and the length of nums two. So next we want our DP array and we want four, well, zeros for, for blank in range of, uh, we'll just say M and for blank in range of m. And we also need to add one here, right, for that empty string or empty integer. Okay, so now we want to populate this. So for i in range of, we're going to start from 1 to n plus 1. And we'll say for j in range of 1 to m plus 1 here. What do we want to do? So if Let's see, if nums1 i minus 1 is equal to nums2 j minus 1, 
That means we want to add one to our DPIJ, uh, as well as our DPI minus one, J minus one, right? I'm trying to make sure this is correct here. I believe I, I think I have to flip this actually. And we want to store our output starting with zero. And each time we do this, we will store our output to equal the max of output and DPI J. So finally, we should just return our output here. So let's see if this works. Okay, so I put two examples here. It looks like that's working, right? Two or three, so let's submit that. a little bit slow and there we go accepted so I know that seemed pretty slow but um, it's actually the it's perfectly acceptable solution here um, huh well I don't know why it was so slow it shouldn't have been that slow <laughs> uh, either way that's going to be time complexity n times m and the space complexity is going to be the same um, there are some other approaches where you can definitely minimize the space uh, optimize this process a little bit, as well as other approaches like a rolling hash and uh, PMP. But uh, those were a little bit overly complex. I'm just going to go with the traditional solution. And really, I, I think even this is not that intuitive. It's, it's uh, pretty hard to come up with. So, okay. Well, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.